Mmm, Shalom out there. Let's see if we if we own. <clears throat> Mic check one two. Yeah, it's on there. Let's see, what we got. Shalom, brothers and sisters out there. A quick topic to go into. A couple of things. Just give me a second here. Give me a bloody chance to share this. A couple of things. All right. One more. One more. All right. So, as we know, we are the Hebrew Israelites, okay? And we bring out these lessons constantly through the spirit and power of Yahweh by Shimei Shai. So, the water for everybody joining. Welcome, brothers and sisters out there. All praise to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai, by Hashem, Rakakwadash. Double honor to the apostles and elders of Great Millstone. And as always, Shalom to the hopefully elect. All right, this lesson is entitled Even if you leave America, there's no escaping the Lord's judgment. Even if you leave America, there's no escaping the Lord's judgment. Now, before we get into the main topic, I want to show you a quick video if I can. Y'all just hold tight here. Let's see. Uh, using this app. And so I could, you know, have the capability to show you this. All right. So there's a video going around on the chat among the brotherhood. It's a lock here. And this is it right here. Just hold on here. This thing is doing what it wants to do. All right, this is entitled Screams of Pain. Thief gets impaled on a fence after trying to escape an apartment. All right, let's see if we can play it. It's going to be short and quick. I can get this thing to act right. Come on now. Look at it. Y'all see what it's doing? This is BS. Let's, let's refresh it. All right, here we go. Bye -bye. <laughs> So you see it right there. I'll, I'll play it again. <laughs> So as you see right there, dude got himself in a terrible pickle. Again, it's entitled Screams of Pain. Thief gets impaled on a fence after trying to escape an apartment. So lock here. So obviously, this this not too bright individual. This not too bright individual stole something. And then he attempted to escape the apartment and his dumbass slipped on the fence and impaled himself and now he's stuck screaming and wailing like a banshee now and i saw this and i and i laughed just like y'all laughing on the comment board now i laughed when i first saw that because this is nothing more than hey you got snared in the work of your own hands let's go there let's bring a scripture two out out about it you can't when you do wickedness this is what this is what happens to you this is going to be uh psalms chapter 9 verse 16 it says the lord yahweh is known by the judgment which he executed and, and that's just part of it now your dumb ass is stuck you impaled through the stomach. You might bleed out and die. But if you get uh, if you get medical attention, you're going to jail. You see? <laughs> you're going to jail. The Lord is known by the judgment which he executed. The wicked is snared in the work of his own hands. Higion Selah. And I should have read verse 15. It says, The heathen are sunk down in the pit that they made. 
See, you got the nations steadily trying to dig a pit for the house of Israel, but they're going to be taken in their own traps. Esau, Edom's uh, conjuring up shit to come against the Israelites with. Hey, it's only going to turn around on him anyway. Right, but in this case, we'll use it for this guy. He's he's stuck in a pit that he made. The heathen are sunk down in the pit that they made, and the net which they had, which they hid, is their own foot taken. Right, you hid a trap, you made a trap for someone else, and you fell in it. Right, the Lord is known by the judgment which He executed. The wicked is snared in the work of their own hands. Higion Selah, and that's just right there, just cold, straight to the point. You know. And we keep always bringing out these lessons. Fear the Lord. This is Proverbs 26, 27. Whoso diggeth the pit shall fall therein. You're doing wickedness out there. It's going to catch you. It's going to find you out. Whoso diggeth the pit shall fall therein. And he that rolleth a stone, it, shall, it will return upon him. You're going up a hill, rolling a big stone. It's possible it could roll back and crush you. Just like you see with this guy, right? Let's see what the Lord said here. A worse... Let's see. The Lord gives when when we read the, the uh, about our Lord and Savior Howard Shai, oftentimes when he healed people, he told him, right, you had you got a second chance, right? This is uh John 5 and 11. I'm gonna start at verse 10. The Jews therefore said unto him that was cured, It is the Sabbath day, is it not lawful for thee to carry thy bed? So this is a man that was healed, and then Yahweh Shai uh, healed him on the Sabbath day. And then the, the, the uh, wicked scribes and Pharisees were coming against him. The Jews therefore said to him that was cured, is it the Sabbath day? Is, it is not lawful for thee to carry thy bed. So they was getting on this guy, telling him not to carry his bed. But this is the same man that was lame a few minutes ago. He answered them, he that made me whole, the same said unto me, take up thy bed and walk. Then asked they him, what man is that which said unto thee, take up thy bed and walk? And he that was healed was not who it was, for Yahushua had conveyed himself away, a multitude being in that place. Afterward, Yahushua findeth him in the temple and said unto him, Behold, thou art made whole. What else? Sin no more, lest a worse thing come unto thee. You see? So Yahushua, after the man was healed, he kind of, you know, hid himself. But then he found the same individual again. And he told him, Look, I healed you. But stop sinning or next time it's going to be a lot worse. So with the gospel being preached, these people out there in the world are just doing iniquity. They're not listening. Then they get snared in the work of their own hands. Right? They get snared in the work of their own hands. Be sure that your sin, let's get this one, your sin. Oh, man, come on. Uh, hold on, y'all. <clears throat> we'll find you. All right, we have here, this is Numbers 32 and verse 22. It says, uh, I start at 20. And Moses said unto them, if ye will do this thing, if you will go armed before the Lord to war, and will go all of you armed over Jordan before the Lord until he hath driven out his enemies before him, the land, will be, the land be subdued before the Lord, then afterward ye shall return and be guiltless before the Lord and before Israel, and this land shall be your possession before the Lord. But if ye will not do so, behold, ye have sinned against the Lord, and be sure your sin will find you out. We know that our God is a God of recompense, right? He's a God of righteousness. And righteousness says that the things you do, they're going to come back unto you. But if ye will not do so, behold, ye have sinned against the Lord, and be sure your sin will find you out. Now, obviously, that wasn't dealing with the situation that we just saw. But the point is still there. Be sure that your sin will find you out. This is Proverbs 11. And I'll start at verse 30. It says, The fruit of the righteous is a tree of life. And he that winneth souls is wise. Behold, the righteous shall be recompensed in the earth. Much more the wicked and the sinner. So righteousness has a recompense, but so does wickedness. Behold, the righteous shall be recompensed in the earth, much more the wicked and the sinner. You're doing evil out there. The Lord is not going to tolerate it. At some point, it's going to come back on you. This is Galatians 6, verse 7. Be not deceived. The Most High is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, 
that shall he also reap. When you sow, you're planting. Whatever you plant into the ground, it's going to grow back. If you sow the seeds of wickedness, what's going to come? The thing that, that wickedness brings forth, that's death. Romans 6, 23. The wages of sin is death. Be not deceived. The Most High is not mocked. If you if any deception going on, you're just fooling yourself. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Let's also get now Colossians 3.25. And we can uh maybe read a few off the comment board. This is uh Colossians 3.24. Knowing that of the Lord, Salakia, verse 23. And whatsoever ye do, do it heartily as to the Lord and not unto men, knowing that of the Lord ye shall receive the reward of the inheritance. For ye serve the Lord, Hamashiach. That's if you're doing the right thing. You're of the Israelites, you're of the elect. But he that doeth wrong shall receive for the wrong which he hath done, and there is no respect of persons, whether you be a king, whether you be a prophet, whether you be a woman of the Lord, a child, it makes no difference. All right, the most high will bring upon you the thing that you sold in the earth. Let's read real quick off the comment board. The water brothers, this is uh, Mose Naim, Mose Naim, servant of Yahweh Shai, Psalms 37 28. For the Lord loveth judgment and forsaketh not his saints, they are preserved forever. But the seed of the wicked shall be cut off, and that's even if you're a wicked Israelite. Virgin Island Straight Gate, Ecclesiastes 21 and 2. Flee from sin is from the face of a serpent. For if thou comest too near it, it will bite thee. The teeth thereof are as the teeth of a lion slaying the souls of men. If, if you gotta, with sin, you got to behave as if you're walking in a path and you see a big-ass snake jump out. You'll break your neck trying to get away from that snake. You got to behave the same way when it comes to sin. You see it coming, you go the other direction. Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil, right? This is... Uh, Jim is prince of the power, Job 18 and 8, for he is cast into a net by his own feet and walketh upon a snare. The gin shall take him by the heel and the robber shall prevail against him. The snare is hid for him in the ground and a trap for him in the way. And really it's dealing with the wicked right there. But if you're a wicked ass Israelite, <laughs> it's, hey, you, you, you're going after your father, the devil, and it's going to be the same for you. The Lord said he'll lay a stumbling block before you. Just like you see that dude up there, this fence through his stomach, he ah, hollering like a little bitch. You wouldn't think about that when you was going to somebody's apartment trying to steal, trying to steal jewelry, trying to steal money, or whatever it was. You was breaking the commandments. Thou should not steal. So guess what? Now you, now you, you know, well, I don't know where he is now, but he was, hey, he got impaled. That's a painful thing. And it's in him, and he can't, his foot, he can't get enough uh, 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 traction, right, or leverage to get himself off of that. Terrible, man. Terrible. So, you know, let that be a warning. This is our uh, GMS Watchman of Yahweh Shire. Jeremiah 42, 19. The Lord has said concerning you, O remnant of Judah, go ye not into Egypt. Know certainly that I have admonished you this day. I have warned you, right? And you're going, you know, dealing with Egypt. Now we're in spiritual Egypt. Don't go after the ways of these other nations. Don't take on you the spirit of Esau, Edom, which is bloodshed, murder, death, stealing, right? What does it say about... um? The uh the bloody city. It's all lies and robbery. That's robbery right there. All right. So let's go on. The Water Brothers for the scriptures. Um, this is GMS in his likeness. Psalms 119 50 and 158. I beheld the transgressors and was grieved because they kept not thy word. And we see that it grieves us because these people ain't keeping the word of the Lord, but we don't expect them to. But we still have an opportunity to edify through their iniquity, through their fall, you know, through their wickedness. So let's get on with the title. Um, yeah, that's fire. Brother Kazak, Ecclesiastes 12 and 6. For the Most High hated sinners and will repay vengeance unto the ungodly and keepeth them against the mighty day of their punishment. So this guy was being, he was a sinner. And the Most High was repaying him for his ungodliness. Now I want to go real quick here to the main video at hand. Let's go and get that. This is going to be from over here. So there's a, a woman. And I'll let you hear the video. I'm going to play it in momentarily. Just hold on here. Let me actually get my earphones. Right. This uh, attractive young woman. Let's pause it momentarily. She's making a statement. This also came through the chat this morning. As soon as I saw it, you know, I just got to it this afternoon. But as soon as I saw it, I said, that'd be good to bring a lesson out on it. 
Let's listen to what she says and then we'll analyze it scripturally. All right, hold tight. It wasn't easy for me to leave the States at first. It was mentally difficult. I kept researching, I kept pros and conning things. So it was difficult, it took me three years. But I'm gonna tell you, when I finally left, it wasn't to none of the places I researched, it was on a whim. It was a nightmare that sent my spirit in complete turmoil. It was seeing what was going to happen to the United States over and over in dreams that were happening every week. And then that's when I said, God, if it's meant for me to leave because what I'm seeing is true, then I need you to open the door. And the door opened and I jumped, I leaped. It took faith, it took some courage, and it took a little bit of crazy on my part. But y'all better stop looking and waiting and find a way to fight and get the fuck out of the United States. So the question I have for you, have you been having dreams about what's going to go down here in America? And the answer would probably be yes. There's a lot of dreams going on. Let's play it one more time. It wasn't easy for me to leave the States at first. It was mentally difficult. I kept researching, I kept pros and conning things. So it was difficult, it took me three years. But I'm gonna tell you, when I finally left, it wasn't to none of the places I researched, it was on a whim. It was a nightmare that sent my spirit in complete turmoil. It was seeing what was going to happen to the United States over and over in dreams that were happening every week. And then that's when I said, God, if it's meant for me to leave because what I'm seeing is true, then I need you to open the door. And the door opened and I jumped, I leaped. It took faith, it took some courage and it took a little bit of crazy on my part. But y'all better stop looking and waiting and find a way to fight and get the fuck out of the United States. So the question I have for you, have you been having dreams? Yeah, and that other guy's, I don't know that dude's name. I forgot his name from African Diaspora News. You can go and find that video on YouTube if you know if you let me see. I'll post a link. Maybe brothers want to go there. I can actually post that. Let's see here. Let's go back. Come back to me. So yeah, I actually bring that video up. I'll put it in, I'll put the link to it in the chat. The title of the video is Sister Sister Left America Having Dreams, right? Something like that. But here's the link to it. All right. Now, the first thing I want to mention, there's a brother on the comment board, right? Judah, I'm sorry, Yaquab Judah Israel, he posted Revelation 18 and 4. And I heard another angel, Salaki, and I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that you be not partakers of her sins, and that you receive not of her plagues. A lot of brothers post this scripture thinking that it's telling you to come out of the ways of Babylon the Great. That's incorrect. Again, because I've done lessons on it and put it so brothers would know. This scripture is not saying come out of the ways of America. This scripture is used as in come out of her, my people being beamed up. Revelation 11. Make sure you take note of that. All right, because that's the incorrect breakdown of that. It sounds like it's saying that, but it's not what it's saying. Now, I'll tell you the story real quick. Years ago, I was asked the same question by uh, Elder Apostle Orion Lob. He asked me personally, on, I guess it was on the comment board. He posted the scripture. He said, brother, what does this mean? Right. And that scripture, I, I said it the way that the brother, you know, most brothers, a lot of brothers, I won't say most because most of the brothers as teachers, they know that. But uh, a lot of people think that scripture means coming out of Babylon. That's what I said, coming out of the ways of Babylon. Right. But he said, no, that's incorrect. He said, this is talking about when the chariots come and literally beam up the elect. You can put it with Revelation 11. Let's go there. But well, we can actually go there over here. This Revelation 11 is what it's speaking on. Let's get it. This is the precept. Revelation 11. Is it 11? It says Revelation 11 and 12. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, come up hither. It's come out of her, my people, come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud and the enemies beheld them. That's the elect being beamed up in the chariots. Also, you can get Isaiah 26 and 20. Another salvation scripture. Isaiah 26 and 20. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. See, come, my people, come up hither. Come, my people, out of Babylon. 
Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself as it were for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. So here, you're being hidden in the day of the Lord's anger. Okay, you're being beamed up into the chariots. Now, going forward, so this, this lady left, you know, America. And you're going to have a lot of people that do this. A lot of people are going to try to run and leave, you know, when they have a dream or they're told. Because there was also a flea Babylon doctrine some years ago that was being taught by uh, GOCC. And you had a lot of people that ran and left. They got passports. And we heard the stories when they came back. They ran, they got passports, they got money together. And that false prophet... Elder Rakar from the GLCC, he, he got the people to do that. And then they literally left and they went, a lot of them went to Egypt. <laughs> they went to Egypt and, they, and then they, when they got over there, the way the story goes is the dude was taking their passports and they, and they were stuck over there. They were stuck in Egypt. And this nigga riding around in a bug in a bug eye bins, whatever they call it, a bug eye or whatever, whatever bins. And, you know, and the Dallas brothers saw them all in Dallas and different places like that. And then when the people actually got, was able to get back to Babylon the Great, one of the guys started following great millstone he told us the story you know he, he told on the comment board and i did lessons on it so you know i said all that to say and now i'm gonna show you the scriptures that they use to try to justify that flea babylon doctrine because you're not i mean at the end of the day it's not a sin if you leave america and you want to move somewhere else okay fine but the judgment of the lord is still going to find you now as a biblical doctrine it's not biblical for you as israelites to run and leave babylon the great because this is what a great deliverance is going to be anyway. Not saying that if you go somewhere else, if you're of the elect, wherever you go, the Lord is going to deliver you. But you may go from this situation to a worse situation. Because the scriptures tell us that the, the islands and the mountains are going to be moved out of their places from the destruction of Babylon the Great. So if you leave Babylon the Great and you go to Jamaica, Barbados, Trinidad, one of the islands, or you go to the South Pacific someplace, Hawaii, that shit might sink into the ocean. Then what you going to do? So you think this, the judgment is only going to be in America? No, it's not. The judgment is going to be everywhere. As it tells you, uh, the Lord is going to send uh, plagues to try them that dwell on the earth. So everybody going, every place is going to be judged. So what, where are you going? What are you running from? Now, in her case, I ain't getting on her because if you feel you can have a better life somewhere else, because, I mean, at the end of the day, man, America is pretty fucked up. If you can go to, you know, who wouldn't want to go to the Bahamas and live or the Virgin Islands or, you know, someplace beautiful, where you can basically live off the land and you you know what I mean? Who wouldn't want to do that? But you're not gonna, you're not gonna uh, you know, it's not gonna help you escape the judgment of the Lord. That's right. Judah Israel said, out of the fire into the frying pan. You're only gonna bring a worse thing on yourself. Let's get uh so when people try to use the flea Babylon doctrine, this is one they'll commonly use. They'll say, Jeremiah, right? 51. I think it's six, but it may be a different verse. Jeremiah 51 and 6, right? It says, flee out of the midst of Babylon and deliver every man his soul. Be not cut off in her iniquity, for this is the time of the Lord's vengeance. He will render unto her a recompense, right? And it does seem to indicate flee out of the midst of Babylon. But this is where you apply the spiritual fleeing out of Babylon. Back then, it may, if it literal Babylon, that was told. But now you was babylon the great the daughter of babylon so here is where the lord's great deliverance is going to come from right let's first get this is how you deliver your soul because it said flee out of the midst of babylon and deliver every man his soul this is how you deliver your soul right um there's a couple of verses ezekiel 319 you can go and read the whole you know the whole context of the of the scripture it says, yet if thou warn the wicked and he turn not from his wickedness, nor from his wicked way, he shall die in his iniquity. But thou hast delivered thy soul for the men that receive the truth as prophets of the Lord. You got to warn the people. This is part of delivering your soul. Ezekiel 3.21, nevertheless, if thou warn the righteous man that the righteous sin not and he does not sin, he shall surely live. But because he is warned, also thou hast delivered thy soul. Ezekiel 33 and 9, nevertheless, if thou warn the wicked of his way to turn from it, if he do not turn from his way, he shall die in his iniquity, but thou hast delivered thy soul. And also, if you heed the warnings of the Lord, you deliver your soul. You see? You deliver your soul from heeding the warnings of the Lord, turning from the ways of Babylon the Great. Also here, spiritually, Micah 2, verse 10. 
Doggone it, messed up. Micah 2 and 10. It says, Arise ye and depart, for this is not your rest. Because it is polluted, it shall destroy you, even with a sore destruction. Now, in the, in the spirit, we know when you read these scriptures, it sounds like it's telling you to leave Babylon the great. Get away from Babylon. No, because the Lord says he got, when you're reading the scriptures, two-thirds are going to be cut off here and die, but a one-third are going to be saved. If you have faith, why are you trying to run from the, from the judgment? The Lord is going to deliver his elect from Babylon the great. Let's prove that. Let's go to, now you go to also Micah, right? Micah 4, and is it 10? This gives you the location in which the elect is delivered from. Micah 4 and 10, it says, Be in pain and labor to bring forth, O daughter of Zion, like a woman in travail. For now shalt thou go forth out of the city. The daughter of Zion is the Israelites. The city that we lived, went forth out of was, was our Jerusalem. For thou shalt go forth out of the city, and thou shalt dwell in the field. Where's the field? The field is the world. You read that in Matthew 13, in the parable of uh, the wheat and the tares. The field is the world. The good seed are the children of the kingdom, but the tares are the children of the wicked one. And thou shalt dwell in the field. You're going to be scattered all over the earth. And thou shalt go even to Babylon, Babylon the great. And there shalt thou be delivered. For the Lord, Yahweh Bashem, Yahweh Shai, shall redeem thee from the hand of thine enemies. So the Lord is going to come to Babylon the great, literally, and deliver the elect from Esau, Edom, as he's getting destroyed. Let's go real quick to Jeremiah. Three, and prove that. And even though you got the brothers in the UK and in, and in Barbados and in Trinidad and Jamaica, the Lord too is going to go to those places and deliver those brothers. Puerto Rico, wherever else around the world. Jeremiah three eighteen. In those days, you know what? Let's start at seventeen. At that time, they shall call Jerusalem the throne of the Lord, and all nations shall be gathered unto it, to the name of the Lord to Jerusalem. This is when we finally in the kingdom. Neither shall they walk any more after the imagination of their evil heart. In those days, the house of Judah shall walk with the house of Israel, all 12 tribes, Judah, the southern kingdom, and Israel, the northern kingdom. And they shall come together out of the land of the north, that's Babylon the great, right? To the land that I have given for an inheritance unto your father. So the chair is coming here first, mainly, because this is what a great deliverance is going to be. But he's also going to the other parts of the world as well to deliver those Israelites that are scattered there. Jeremiah 23 and 5. I messed that up. Jeremiah 23 and 5. It says, Behold, the days come, said the Lord, that will raise unto David a righteous branch, and a king shall reign and prosper, and shall execute judgment and justice in the earth. This tells you who it is and when it is. When the deliverance is Not until you see these things happening Do you know that the Israelites are back in the homeland Because the righteous branch from the house of David Who is Jehovah Shai Is going to come, he's going to reign and prosper He's going to execute judgment and justice in the earth That's not happening now So the people in the Holy Land, they couldn't possibly be those people In his days Judah shall be saved The southern kingdom And Israel shall dwell safely The northern kingdom and this is his name whereby he shall be called the Lord our righteousness. Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that they shall no more say, The Lord liveth, which brought up the children of Israel out of the land of Egypt. That's the old Exodus. But the Lord liveth, which brought up and which led the seed of the house of Israel out of the north country, North America, Babylon the Great, and from all countries, everywhere else, whither I had driven them, and they shall dwell in their own land, you see? So the new exodus is what people are going to be talking about. The Lord is going to come. He's going to deliver the Israelites out of Babylon the Great. Now you go back to Revelation 11, and this is the great deliverance. This is where the Israelites wake up. This is where the ministry is, is coming out from. This is where the Lord is going to deliver his people from, mainly. Revelation 11 and 8, and their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city, which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt, where also our Lord was crucified. That's America, Babylon the Great. Spiritual Sodom, spiritual Egypt. Right? Let's jump down. Verse 11, And after three days and a half, the spirit of life from the Most High entered into them. This is the Great Awakening, as you see we're in the midst of now. 
right? It's only going to increase more and more and more. More Israelites going to continue to wake up. That spirit of life from the Most High entering into us, that's the Holy Spirit. And they stood upon their feet and great fear fell upon them which saw them. Us brothers on the comment boards, doing the videos, doing the lessons, the camps, they are standing upon their feet. They have the spirit of life in them, the Holy Spirit, right? We're standing upon our feet and all the nations are being afraid. Esau's scared. That's why he's sending vocab Malone and the Christians are running up on us because they're in great fear because they see that we're awakening. Then what happens? And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, come up hither. When does this happen? After the great awakening. Where does it happen? Spiritual Sodom in Egypt. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud. The Lord maker of the clouds is chariots, right? And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud and their enemies beheld them. See, they're going to see the elect get beamed up. And the same hour, as soon as they were beamed up, was there a great earthquake. What's going to cause the earthquake? The nuclear destruction. And the tenth part of the city fell. All ten FEMA zones, look it up. Go on, go on Google Images, type in, ten, type in FEMA zones. You'll see the, the country of Babylon the Great broken up into, into ten FEMA zones. Ten FEMA zones represented by Roman numerals. That's the ten parts of the city. All ten are destroyed. In this verse, in the same hour was there a great earthquake, and the tenth part of the city fell, and in the earthquake were slain of men seven thousand, and that seven in seven thousand is seven means completion. Everybody in Babylon the Great was completely destroyed, except the remnant who were beamed up. And the remnant were affrighted and gave glory to the God of heaven. Why were they affrighted? Because they barely made it out. They were beamed up. And then the missiles came the same hour and destroyed the hell out of Babylon the Great and all the citizens that in Babylon the Great that are not Israelites and two-thirds of Israelites were destroyed in Babylon the Great. All those that remained through Jacob's trouble. See? And when Babylon the Great, Revelation 16, is it? When the nuclear destruction comes, listen to what it says. Revelation 16. Hold on, let me get the verse. Um... Just hold up. It's a certain verse I want. Yeah. So this is Revelation 16 and 15. It says, Blessed, Salakia, behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments, lest he walk naked and they see his shame. The Lord says he's coming as a thief, and you're blessed if you remain in this truth, which is where you get your righteous garments from, from the from the from the Bible, the understanding thereof. Lest he walk naked and they see his shame. If you're naked, you're without the truth. You're naked. Right? And he gathered them together into a place called in the Hebrew tongue Armageddon, or in the Hebrew tongue Harmagawan, which means mountain or valley of troops. That's World War III. Verse 17. And the seventh angel poured out his vial into the air, and there came a great voice out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. The Lord said, It is done. The Lord said, It is done. <laughs> And there were voices and thunders and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such as was not since men were upon the earth so mighty an earthquake and so great. What caused this? That nuclear destruction from Babylon the Great. And the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon came in remembrance before the Most High to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. Then what happened? And every island fled away and the mountains were not found. You see that? So if you run to the islands, you got a good chance of still getting, you're still getting the judgment of the Lord because the nuclear destruction of Babylon is going to be so great. It's going to cause all types of tidal waves, tsunamis, you know, earthquakes, uh, cyclones, water spouts, acid rain, you know, all types of shit going to be going on, man. This whole place is going to be in a, in a it's going to be chaos down here. And every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven. What is this hail? This is the nuclear missiles raining from the heavens. Isaiah 24 says, The windows from on high are open, and the foundations of the earth do shake from the missiles. And there fell upon men a great hail out of heaven, every stone about the weight of a talent, and men blasphemed the Most High because of the plague of the hail, for the plague thereof was exceeding great. It's going to come down like hell upon the head of the wicked. Upon all the inhabitants of Babylon the Great. And they're going to talk shit. They're going to blaspheme the Lord. When they see the chariots come. And, and Negroes, Latinos, Native Americans, 
right? Undesirables of this country are beamed up. They're going to be, why those niggas going up and we're not, Lord? They're going to be cussing the Lord out. They're going to be blaspheming. They're going to be talking shit. Revelation, real quick, six. Another precept on, uh, real quick, nuclear destruction. Revelation 6 and 12, and I beheld when he had opened the sixth seal, and lo, there was a great earthquake. There it is again. And the sun became black as sackcloth of hair, and the moon became as blood. And the stars of heaven fell into the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs, when she is shaken of a mighty wind. John the Revelator saw things coming out of the heavens, and he likened it unto stars falling from the, from the heavens, you know, like unto a fig tree when shaken of a wind and all the figs fall out, right? And the stars fell into the earth, even as a fig tree casteth her untimely figs when she is shaken of a mighty wind. And the heaven departed as a scroll when it is rolled together and every mountain and island were moved out of their places. See, the nuclear destruction gonna cause chaos on the earth. So running from Babylon the Great, trying to go someplace else, trying to get away from it, it ain't going to matter, right? And when you read in 2nd Esdras, let's go back for a minute. When you read it in 2nd Esdras, I think I got it here. The Most High is going to cause a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord in every place. It's not going to matter. So you have those dreams, and then you say, it's going to be total chaos in Babylon the Great, Salakia. You say it's going to be total chaos in Babylon. They're going to be raping women. This is going to be happening. That shit going to be going everywhere. But you know why? Because it's Jacob's trouble. And if you're Jacob, you're going to be in trouble. If you run to London, you're going to be in trouble. If you go to Trinidad, you're going to be in trouble. You go to the islands, trouble. China, trouble. They're going to be looking for you, Jacob. You can't get out of this. There's nowhere to run to. It's an old song from, uh, I think it's the Grave Diggers. I mean, they got it from, of course, another song. But the way the chorus goes is, uh, there's nowhere to run to, baby. There's nowhere to hide. There's nowhere to run to, baby. You best stay inside. I mean, it's not gonna make a difference where you go. Even from the old song, there's no place, nowhere to run to, baby. No place to hide. I think it was Aretha Franklin. Somebody know, you know or not. But just real quick, this is Second Esdras, sixteen. Um, yeah. It says right here, 2nd Edges 16 and 65, 64, therefore, it's like it, 63, surely he knoweth your inventions and what you think in your hearts, even them that sin and would hide their sin. Therefore, had the Lord exactly searched out all your works and he will put you all to shame. And when your sins are brought forth, ye shall be ashamed before men. And your own sin shall be your accusers in that day. You can't run. What will you do or how will you hide your sins before the Most High and his angels? Behold, the Most High himself is a judge. Fear him. Leave off from your sins and forget your iniquities to meddle no more with them forever. So shall the Most High lead you forth and deliver you from all trouble. You see, that's how you get delivered. Stop being wicked. For behold, the burning wrath of a great multitude is kindled over you. That great multitude is these nations. First and foremost, Esau, Edom, the Edomites, but also the Lord is going to use all these nations. And they shall take away certain of you and feed you being idle with things offered unto idols. And that's that MOTB, right? They're going to feed you being idle with things offered unto idols. That thing is an idolatrous, you know, that's an image, basically. It's talking about, well, you know, you got the image of the beast, and you got the mark, the literal mark, right? And they say they're going to feed you with things offered in idols. No man might buy or sell, save he that so-and-so, so-and-so. How you going to eat? They're going to feed you, right, with things offered in the idols. This thing is offered into an idol. When you take it, it's idolatry. It's sin against the Heavenly Father, and those that take it will be destroyed. And they that consented to them shall be had in derision and in reproach and trodden underfoot. Listen to this. For there shall be in every place, everywhere, for there shall be in every place and in the next cities a great insurrection upon those that fear the Lord. They shall be like madmen, sparing none, but still spoiling and destroying those that fear the Lord. It's going to be in every place. There's nowhere to go. No matter where you run to, you ain't going to get away from the judgment of the Lord. Let's get real quick. Um, I lost it. It'll come back, Lord willing. I was on the road, too. Had the scriptures going together. 
and the water for the precepts, brothers. But I just want to count. I'm, I'm running an errand and I'm, I'm pretty much done. I was just using multitasking, using the time. Uh, oh, I got it. Revelation, the water, you how about me how it shot. Revelation 2 and 10, I believe. Just hold on. No, it's Revelation 3 and 10. But I use 2 and 10 too. Revelation 2 verse 10. Come on now. It says, Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer, shall suffer, not might suffer, could suffer. No, you're going to suffer. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison that ye might be tried, and ye shall have tribulation ten days. And, not, and we don't know if it's a literal ten, it's a representative of a period of time. However long that tribulation is that you're going to be tried. Right? If you get locked into the FEMA camps, they may keep you there seven days, may keep you 14 days. You may stay 30 days. It's all determined by what the Spirit of the Lord want to have happen. You can stay two days and then the angels break you out. Be thou faithful in the death and I will give thee a crown of life. See that? So the FEMA camps is clearly right there in the scriptures. This is also Revelation 3 and 10. Listen to this. Be, uh, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation. Right, when the Lord says he's going to keep you from the hour of temptation, it means he's going to give you the spirit to get through it, to endure it. But listen to this next verse, the next line. Because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world. So why are you going to run and leave? It's going to come upon all the world. There's nowhere to go. Which shall come upon all the world for what purpose? To try them that dwell upon the earth. It's for a trial. There's no way you're going to go. You're not going to be tried by the Lord. As a matter of fact, if you're of the elect, you will be tried by the Lord. Let's, let's we get this last one here. We'll bring it up here. Zechariah. And that go and going right back to damn Babylon the great man. And I'm sure there's many other scriptures that we could have got. There's other scriptures that are still there that, you know, that prove the points, but this, this will suffice. Zechariah 13 and 8 And it shall come to pass that in all the land There uh, saith the Lord Two parts therein shall be cut off and die That's the two thirds That's in Babylon the great But the third shall be left therein There's going to be a remnant And I will bring the third part through the fire And will refine them as silver is refined And will try them as gold is tried They shall call on my name And I will hear them I will say it is my people and they shall say, the Lord is my power. And that right there is your come up hither. The Lord is going to save you out of all the places where we dwell. But he's going to deliver us from Babylon. This is what a great deliverance is. Babylon the Great. Also, Jeremiah 16 and 14 is another one. Tells you that the Lord is going to come to Babylon the Great and deliver the Israelites from there. Let's see if we can read it real quick. And then I'm going to shut it down. Jeremiah 16. And 14 it says therefore behold the days come said the Lord that it shall no more be said the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of Egypt but the Lord liveth that brought up the children of Israel from the land of the north Babylon the great and from all the lands where he had driven them and I will bring them again into their own land that I gave into their fathers so someone may say well, if the scriptures say the Lord gonna deliver us wherever we wherever we go, well, that's true. If you're of the elect, but if you're of the elect, you're not going. You're probably not going to leave Babylon the Great to try to run, because these people minds, these women in particular, they're afraid, man. People are having dreams. The Lord scared that lady, and if that's her lot, no problem. If it's your lot to move, you got relatives in another part of the world you want to go. There's nothing wrong with that. That don't mean if you're if you're a person in the faith and the Lord, you know, put the spirit on you to leave and go dwell with relatives elsewhere. Obviously. Man's goings are of the Lord. How can a man then understand his own way? So no problem with that. But for those that are in a spiritual mindset and you thinking that you're doing yourself a favor by leaving Babylon the Great because you're going to... You, Jake really think you're going to go someplace, you're going to go to Cuba, then you're going to be able to look over when the missiles hitting Babylon and then Cuba going to be straight. Hell no. Nah. Cuba going to be going through turmoil. Jake going to be getting sought out by uh, Esau, period, man. The Lord's going to put the spirit on these nations to come after you, Jake. That's why it's called Jacob's trouble. To try Jacob. The Lord is doing what he's doing. He's going he's gonna to try you. We just read it in Zechariah 13 and 9. He's going to try them as the gold in the fire. 
that's it. You're going to be tried. So no matter where you go, there's no escaping the judgment of the Lord. Let's play this video by this lady one more time. And now you listen to it with your new ears after hearing all those scriptures and you will know, okay, yeah, she's going off. We're not really going off, but you know, it ain't going to do her much good. I mean, maybe, maybe the Lord did that. So one of the, you know, so another brother could get with her. I don't know. spirit in complete turmoil it was seeing what was going to happen to the united states over and over in dreams that were happening every week and then that's when i said god if it's meant for me to leave because what i'm seeing is true then i need you to open the door and the door opened and i jumped i leaped it took faith it took some courage and it took a little bit of crazy on my part but y'all better stop looking and waiting and find a way to fight and get the fuck out of the United States. So the question I have for you. <clears throat> so you heard it right there. And that's a good scripture the brother put up. That you heard it right there. She said, get the fuck out of the United States, right? Now, you can see that she doesn't really know the truth because she's using the term God, God. You know, she ain't said nothing about the Israelites. She ain't got a head covered. She ain't, you know. She look like she just of the world, but she she does understand that, you know, that she saw something in a vision and dream and it scared the hell out of her. So, hey, whatever, whatever. She doesn't have a covering, though. She ain't got no man of the Lord. See, so she's worried. That's right. Run. <laughs> yep. Well, do it then. Do it then. Prophet Habakkuk. Hey, whatever the spirit of the Lord put on you. This is Kazak. Judges 5 and 11, they that are delivered from the noise of the archers uh, in the places of drawing water. The places of drawing water represent the places of our captivity. Not really Babylon the Great specifically because it says in the places of drawing water. But they are delivered from the noise of the archers. The archers are the ones shooting off the missiles. The arrows from the archers are the nuclear missiles. Where's the main place the missiles are coming? Right here. So this scripture does indicate where it's speaking of the they that are delivered from the noise of the archers in the places of drawing water who are they that's going to be delivered the elect there shall they rehearse the righteous acts of the lord even the righteous acts toward the inhabitants of uh of his villages in israel then shall the people of the lord go down to the gates which is the leadership so yeah we're going to be practicing you know rehearsing the righteous acts of the lord in the places of drawing water the main place is Babylon the Great. But hey, brothers and sisters, everywhere all over the earth. Now you got a bunch of Israelites in, in the land of uh, Ham. Now as far as we know, Ham is not going to get hit with nuclear missiles, but it could. We don't know certain cities could get hit. But even over there, judgment is going to still come there, man. Because everybody everywhere, he, he causes all, all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond to do what? You already know. And that's part of the judgment. So let's say you leave Babylon the Great. And you go to a place that never gets touched by nuclear destruction. You live, you living up in the mountains, but then you take the MOTB. You still gonna be destroyed. The Lord gonna find some type of judgment. He's gonna use some type of judgment to find you. So there's really no escape. You're much better off just fearing the Lord where you at, walking after His ways. That way you get that man. You know, that's really the only real deliverance. That's it. GMS Watchman of your house shot first peter 4 18 and if the righteous scarcely be saved where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear that's right so you got hey what you gonna do man where you gonna go and most of us we ain't got no money to go flee and go nowhere else and then this is the real kicker and i ain't saying this gonna happen to that lady but it could she may come into a situation where she gotta bring her ass back to babylon the great because look at all the people that went over to israel demona israel they about to get deported now you got to bring your dumb ass back to America. You, you ain't going to feel right. If you leave, you say, oh, I got to get out of here. Oh, I got to leave. We're going to be destroyed. Oh, I saw a dream. Then you leave, you stay for a few months, and you miss Babylon, you come back. That's like saying, I know it's going to be bad, but I had to come back anyway. Man, that, that's, that would be very difficult to have to come back. But we'll see. The water, everybody, for joining in. I got to go. Thanks for the pre-sales brothers out there. I didn't really have time to read more of them. So we'll see you again soon with another lesson, Lord willing, as the title of the lesson was. And Lord willing, it was edifying. You know, I was going fast, so, so lock you. 
It says, even if you leave America, there's no escaping the Lord's judgment. And we prove that through the spirit. Every island and mountain shall be moved out of their places, right? Uh, the Lord's going to try them that dwell upon the earth. And every place is going to be an insurrection. There's nowhere to go. Fear the Lord. Turn back before it's too late. All praise to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, Rakakwadash. Double honor to the apostles and elders of the great millstone. Shalom to the hopefully elect.